Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reveal yourself as the bread of life who satisfies all the hungry souls that return to you in repentance and faith. Renew our hearts and minds during this Lenten season as we receive the promised treasures of your word. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus, the 16th chapter. And the whole congregation of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be, be twice as much as they gather daily. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it each of you as much as he can eat. You shall take each you shall each take an omer according to the number of persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever had much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. And each of them gathered as much as he could eat. O Lord, of mer o Lord have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Lord of the law of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true. And righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and, and drippings of the honeycomb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. The rock was Christ. I speak as to a sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, 
Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we partake of the one bread. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to to God. God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that have seen me and yet do not believe, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, A reminder, as always, that this sermon series uh, is by Timothy Pulse. There is probably nothing that smells better in the air of a kitchen than freshly baked bread. The fragrance can fill a house creating an appetite. We eat bread almost every day as a daily food staple. We enjoy it at breakfast with toast, bagels, or even a Danish. We enjoy it with sandwiches at lunch and rolls at dinner. Bread is as important today as it was throughout history. To have bread is to be rich, to be without it is to be poor. Before the Israelites left Egypt by the hand of God, they were told to make unleavened bread to take with them on their journey. It had no yeast in it to cause it to rise or spoil. However, soon the bread was running out as as the lesson indicates. The people of Israel were wondering and grumbling about how they were to get more bread. The Lord told Moses that he would rain down bread from heaven for them. God kept his word. He soon provided a layer of thin flakes on the desert floor for the Israelites to collect every morning and feed their families. They were also told to only collect enough for the day and nothing more. However, some collected more, and when they did, it became smelly and full of maggots the next day. In another reading in this service, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. He reminded the people that it wasn't Moses who gave Israel bread every day, it was God. God sustained their lives day in and day out with manna. Jesus reminded all who listened to him that God sustained all people with physical bread, but only he can give bread that is eternal life. The Father provided eternal life through the bread from heaven, standing right in front of them, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Bible doesn't simply equate loaves of bread with physical life. No, it equates Jesus Christ as the only source for spiritual life. That is why St. Paul said Israel was led by Christ in the Old Testament. 
Our fathers all ate and the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. The final source for all the manna the Israelites ate and all the water they drank was Jesus Christ. And Jesus still leads and sustains his church. Until your life ends and you enter heaven, he still feeds you with the bread of his holy word and the bread of his holy sacrament. Jesus quoted Moses when he said to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. St. Augustine, a faithful early church father, described teaching the Bible like opening or breaking open a loaf of bread. However, God's word is brought to you through scripture readings, a sermon, a poetic hymn, or even a devotion. It is all bread for your soul as long as it leads and points you to the bread of life, Jesus Christ. We have talked about Moses and unleavened bread and Jesus as the bread of life. Jesus also uses the bread of his holy sacrament to feed and sustain his church until he returns. Just a few verses following St. Paul's words regarding manna, he addresses the Lord's Supper. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The bread that we eat when we celebrate Holy Communion here at, is not ordinary bread. It is not sandwich bread. No, it is Christ's word. Uh, no, it's Christ's word. It, no, when Christ's word is spoken over it, Jesus promises to place his very body into yours. To partake of this bread is to take of, partake of Jesus Christ's true body into yourself. Like the Israelites of old, we journey in the wilderness of life. We live in this sinful world under the heat of sin and death, bearing down on us each day, just as the desert heat beat down on the Israelites. We are waiting for a promised land, not Canaan, but heaven. No matter how crazy or bad life may be for you in the wilderness of this world, you are not left wondering, where can I find help? True help is found where Christ breaks open his word and offers holy food at his altar. We should be fed in the way God chooses to, chooses to feed us through his word and sacraments. Dear friend, may bread always remind you of God's rich love and bounty for you. Bread is certainly a promised treasure. Not only does bread remind you of Jesus, who gave up his flesh on the cross for you, but it reminds you of who you are now. You see, just as numerous as grains of wheat grow and are ground up to make one loaf of bread, we, although many, are made one people by taking the bread of Christ at his altar. You are forgiven and baked into a new image on Easter. As the church, we are a new loaf, a new creation, until Jesus comes again. May you always long for the bread which only God offers you in his Son, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Yes, daily bread is here today and gone tomorrow, but the bread of life, Jesus Christ, lasts forever. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.